Hello, my name's Norms McNamara and I'm the founder of the Purple Angel The Magic Campaign that started right here in Toy Bay. I am so sorry I couldn't be with you tonight, but um, my illness won't allow me. And as you'll hear later on, um, I can only do things like this during the day and um, they're practically impossible to do at night time. Um, so I hope to talk to you today about dementia and to get rid of some of the urban myths that are out there, because there are plenty, plenty of myths out there. And um, what I'll do, I'll start by saying, the first thing that people always say to me, what is dementia? And I always say, well, dementia is the umbrella term of other types of illnesses. When people say dementia, they automatically think Alzheimer's. So, but it's not. Dementia is just the umbrella term. Underneath there is the type of Alzheimer's or Lewy bodies or vascular. So dementia is just a collective name for types of dementia, just like cancer. Just like cancer, you have cancer of the blood, cancer of the lungs, cancer of the legs. It's the same thing. It's still cancer, but different parts of the body. Well, dementia is the same thing, but it has different types. Now, Alzheimer's is the most prominent one. And then they come after that, they come after vascular, frontal lobal, and Lewy bodies. Now, I like to think that Lewy bodies is up there with Alzheimer's. And I'll, and I'll tell you for why in a minute. People then say to me, yeah, but how do you explain what dementia is? And I always say, well, I'm not a doctor. And the best way to explain it is, if you can imagine a Christmas tree that's absolutely adorned with lights, and every one of those lights is a memory, except every now and again, every one of those lights, one of those lights goes off. And then another one, and then another one. So the memories are lost each time the light goes off until eventually the last light that goes off is the one that reminds you how to breathe. And we all know what happens then. Dementia is a terminal illness. There is no known cure for it as yet. But that's not to say there will never, ever be a cure around the corner. They've done some wonderful things with the pandemic, so there isn't any reason why they can't do it for dementia. Now, the types, as I said, are like Alzheimer's, the most popular. Now, the way I explain Alzheimer's is if you can imagine your brain is on a loop and it goes round for so long and then cuts off. So when somebody with dementia says to you, do you know what time it is? And then they say, do you know what time it is? And then they say, do you know what? And so on and so on. And you're sat there thinking, how many times have you asked me this? You know, and sometimes some people even say, you've asked me that a thousand times, why do you keep asking? Did you know that every time they ask that question, it's the first time they've ever asked it. They've never asked it before because the brain's on a loop. So it's gone round and jumped and started again. And that's exactly what Alzheimer's is. It's like your computer, it's rebooting. And it reboots every so often. Unfortunately, it reboots within the memory of what happened 10 minutes ago. So that's kind of what Alzheimer's is in layman's terms. Uh, vascular dementia is when the airflow to the brain is interrupted and you have what you call little mini strokes and it kills the brain cells, that's vascular. Now, Lewy bodies dementia, which a lot of people say I've never heard of that, I am really surprised. And unfortunately, Lewy bodies is the type of dementia that I have. Now, I was diagnosed 11 years ago now. Um, people say to me, how could you talk so well? How could you do this if you have dementia? But you see, they're thinking about Alzheimer's. It's a different type of dementia. With lower bodies, I can do this during the day. I can talk like this during the day most days. Not every day, but most days. But as the day goes on, I suffer from what they call sundowning, which means as the day goes on, I get worse. 
So by seven o'clock tonight, I'll probably not know where I am. By nine o'clock tonight, I'm asking to go home, but I'm sat in my own room. And how many times have you heard people say that about dementia? And then they say that who have dementia. That's the reason why I can't be with you now. And that's the reason why I'm trying to explain it as I do, and it's now mid-afternoon. So it's probably the best time I'm trying to get it, you know, trying to explain it all to you. But Lewy Buddies also comes with hallucinations and night terrors. Now, hallucinations are not dreams. Hallucinations is when the person is wide awake, absolutely wide awake, and they can see things going on that nobody else can. And many times you'll hear people say, there's nobody there, there's no, you can't see anybody, but they can. Uh, it's perfectly true. And an example is I was once sat in a cafe in Barnstable and Elaine and my wife had gone to the um, counter for a drink and there was a lift facing where I was sat and the doors opened and who come walking towards me was me. Yeah, I saw myself walking towards myself. It frightened me to death. I absolutely jumped out my screen, screamed. Everybody wondered what was going on, which obviously they would do, which is only normal. And Elaine came walking over and she, she calmed me down and she says, it looked nothing like you knowing. But in my mind's eye, that was me. It was really me. So that's what Lewy Body says. Frontal lobal is the, I think if I'm right, it's the quickest forming type of dementia. And obviously sometimes does the most damage most quickly because the frontal lobe of the brain is where you're most active. And once that's affected, then it can, uh, the dementia can progress quite, quite quickly. Now here at the Purple Angel, we're very proud that we come from Torbay and we live on two words, which is inclusion and engagement. So if you include people with dementia and you engage with people with, with dementia, you'll be surprised what gets back out of them. And the Christmas tree I mentioned, when those lights go out, if you include and engage with people with dementia, every now and again, that light comes back on. If only for five minutes, 10 minutes, a day, and it's the most wonderful feeling in the world when you can find, remember something, and it's the most frustrating thing when you can't. I always like to think that I'm getting on in life now and my brain's like a filing cabinet and it's had all that information building up for 60 odd years. So it takes me a bit longer to find it now these days. <laughs> but we live as we do and we'll leave with it. But you must include people with dementia. You must engage with them because they're no different than us. My life, wife Elaine worked in a care home. She worked in care for 30 years. So I suppose, if you can be lucky, having this disease, I suppose I was a little bit lucky because Elaine knew exactly what it was and she knew what to look for. And um, she went to the care home one time and there was a lady there and they give her coffee every night and every night she spat it at them and she threw it at them and she swore. And believe me, people with dementia can swear. They might never have sworn all their life but they can swear or start to swear because they've heard the words before, but they lose their inhibitions. And that's the difference. So the ladies in the care home throwing the coffee every night and the lady said to the other carers, have you actually asked her, does she like coffee? And I'll never forget it. One lady said, makes no difference. She's got dementia. She won't know, will she? <sighs> yes, truly, truly happened. So Elaine says to her, this lady, do you like chocolate? Or Ovaltine or Bovule? She said, yes. So every night they give her a hot drink except coffee. And she was as happy as Larry. As happy as Larry. All because somebody had taken the time and trouble to ask her if she wanted tea or coffee. And that sometimes that's all it takes. Just that little bit of effort because we're human, just like anybody else. It's not this big, scary disease, what people think it is. You know, there's so much out there now. I will never forget, 
and I love telling this story. There was a little lady there, she must have been 92, when she came to our memory cafe, which I'll tell you about after. And she said, no, I'm your husband's being awful. And I said, why not? And she said, because he, he thinks I'm having an effort. And I said, no, I'll give him over. I said, he's 95. And she said, I'm telling you, he does. So we, I listened to a story. What happened was, when she went upstairs, her husband followed her because he had dementia. Now, people with dementia do tend to follow you about what you're doing, where you're going and things like that. As some of you might well know. But when he went upstairs and walked down the hallway, there was a mirror in the hallway upstairs. And every time he passed, he saw some in that mirror. But why he didn't see himself, he saw a younger man. And he, yeah, this happens, believe it or not. So he wanted to know who was upstairs with his wife. And he was standing there, he was shouting at this window and accusing his wife of having fur. So what we advised her to do was to bit the mirror up and move it downstairs. So when he was sat in his chair, he could see the mirror and he could keep an eye on this fella while his wife went upstairs. He thought, ah, I've got my eye on you, mate. You're not going upstairs with my wife. But it worked. It actually worked. The guy was calm. His wife went upstairs, you know, and she did a daily routine, whatever she did. But it calmed the tension down. She said, no, he's been so much better. So sometimes it's the simplest things that work. And that's what the Purple Edge is all about, finding the simplest things we can to help people to work. We run a memory cafe at Barton Baptist Church in Torquay on Happaway Road every Saturday afternoon between 1.30 and 3.30. And I would like to take this opportunity now to invite each and every one of you to one of our sessions. And you will see it's not like a memory cafe. It's more like a community cafe. But it's open on a Saturday afternoon because all sorts of people come, not just those with dementia. We have people there who are just a bit lonely. We have people there who have nothing else to do on a Saturday. But we have people there who go to clubs and everything during the week. But there's nothing open on a Saturday afternoon. We are. We're open on a Saturday afternoon between 1.30 and 3.30. We have artists singing. We have groups. We have crafts. We have flower arranging. We have cake making. And I'm sure I'm no need to tell you guys about that. Um, my wife's, I love my wife's cake, tends the size of me. Um, but we have cake making, we have entertainment, we do so, so much. Uh, we fill plant pots, we paint plant pots, we do painting. Oh, I could go on forever. Uh, tai Chi. Yeah, and you know, the most beautiful part about it is it's free. Yeah, it's free. Admission's free, tea is free, coffee's free. Even the cakes are free. And you'll have a great, even the laughter is free. We don't even charge for having fun either. So please come and give us a visit. Or if you know anybody who's a bit down on the cell phone, you know, they've nothing to do on a Saturday afternoon and, you know, they're 50-ish or over, um, everybody is welcome. And that's the Memory Cafe at Barton Baptist Church every Saturday afternoon, apart from the first Saturday of the month, because that's messy church. And that's when all the kids go. You're more than welcome to go, but you'll just find a room full of kids. But apart from there, we're there every Saturday. Please come along and see us. The Purple Angel happened because I was diagnosed at the age of 50. And um, it was very early to be diagnosed. Uh, though I, even this morning on today's news, to keep it topical, there's been a rugby player at 42 who plays for England that's just been diagnosed with early onset dementia. So you've got to remember that dementia could happen at any time to anybody. We work alongside a couple whose child has dementia and he's only five. And he has what they call Batten's disease, which is childhood dementia. So it doesn't matter a jot if you're five or you're 95, your dementia is going to come for you. It's going to come for you. And please don't be taken in 
by papers like the Daily Fail, uh, I mean the Daily Mail. Fraud is slip there. Because it says in the Daily Mail the other week, red wine can cure dementia. I wish. <laughs> I wish he did. Do you know what I mean? It's just a fallacy. It's an urban myth. And they say aluminium, that causes dementia. Or the things we eat, additives. Later, what we eat, what we do lately, it causes, no, it doesn't. Dementia's been around since the dawn of time. The madness of King George. Read your history books. You know, you've only got, you've only, the witches of Chess Witch, you know, who had visions and saw things. You've only got, you can go back hundreds of years. Dementia has always been around. But until somebody like the Prime Minister stands up, or somebody from the clinical commission stands up on television and says, we have found a cure for dementia, do not believe, because there's, only, there's nothing worse than false hope. I learned to live with my disease very early, and I told all family and friends very quickly because I didn't want to think people to think, what's wrong with him? He's not acting right, is he, you know? And, um, and I've heard all the jokes. I've heard all the jokes. And how it came about was, I walked into a shop in Torbay, which I'm not now. And um, I was having trouble with my money because people with dementia have problems with the, with the notes and the coins, they can't differentiate, excuse me. And um, I went in and I just said to the guy behind the counter, I am so sorry, I'm having a bit of a moment. I said, I, I have dementia. And he went, ha, 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 I've got that as well. And he laughed at me. And I stood there, and the thing was, the whole queue laughed as well. And I really, really cannot understand why they did this. And I looked at him, and he went bright red. And when he realised I was serious, he said, I'm so sorry, I didn't think. And I said, no, you didn't, did you? And that's the difference. And I walked out that shop, and I vowed, that day, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, something had to change in Toy Bay. That was 11 years ago. Since then, I can sit here now and tell you that the Toy Bay Alliance, which is now the Purple Angel, is now recognised in 65 countries around the world. We have over 1,800 Purple Angel ambassadors worldwide. We're very well known in Toy Bay with some, maybe not with others. If you look around some of the shops, you'll see the Purple Angel stickers where all the staffs have the information. All we asked them to do was to read it. You guys have the information. And for you guys to become dementia work, all we're going to do is ask you to read that. And once it's all been read, and you tell Jackie that you've all read it, then we will give you accreditation and a lovely little certificate to go with it. And for that, we are grateful, so grateful to you guys. But we are now on worldwide. We have Purple Angel cities in America. We were the first people to help open a memory cafe in the United States of America. And there are now over 1,500. So we, for a long, long time, we used the tagline, it wasn't just the vehicles that got to America, we do as well. You know, they're not all called the Purple Angel Cafes, but they've all worked on our formula. And we shared what we did because it's all about sharing. It costs nothing. And we shared what we did. And there's a 1,500 cafes there now. We opened the very first cafe in Nigeria, Memory Cafe, and we made CNN News doing that. And every year, we hold a World Rock Against Dementia. Now, if you're a bit like me and remember Live Aid, it's a little like that, but without the bit Jaggers and David Bowie's. Sorry, not quite there yet, I wish. But what we do, we hold a rock concert, or people around the world hold a concert. Doesn't have to be rock, could be any music genre whatsoever. But last year, even during COVID, we had 23 countries joining in. And to think that 23 countries around the world on the same weekend or the same week, time is allowing, are celebrating the lives of people who are living with this disease and also celebrating the lives of people who have lost and remembering them is the most wonderful thing. And if anybody ever said to me, can you imagine 
ever get into such a stage when you first started, I'd say never. Because the first meeting we had, we had it with uh, Torbay Council, a few nurses, the police officers, and we had a meeting and right at the end, we said, right, we'll do this, we'll do that. We had lots of big plans. And then we thought, we've no money. We haven't got a penny to our name. So somebody actually, true story this, somebody actually took some plastic flowers out of the bars and we all chipped in to pay for paper for printing. And that's where the printing came from, where I made the first sheet of paper saying what to do when people walked into your shop or when you meet people, which is still available now, I'm pleased to say. And that's how it all started. So we started from very, very humble beginnings. And even though we're all around the world, we never forget our roots. The people have been Torbay have been absolutely wonderful with us. And I think the reason why, guys, is like yourselves, or like a lot of yourselves, not one of us gets paid for what we do. There's a lot of charities out there that pay sky high CEO wages and you know we have no wages to pay we have no tall big buildings in london with electric bills or gas bills or anything like that every volunteer in toy bear there's only eight of us on the steering group but all the rest of the volunteers around the world are volunteers and not one of us gets paid and i think that's what makes the difference between us and other charities because people know whatever we raise Every penny we raise goes back to people with dementia or their families. So they know exactly where the money's going. Our biggest campaign to date is the MP3s. Now, if you don't know what an MP3 is, it's like a little box that plays music and you put headphones in. These days they call them iPods. I think something like that anyway. But we call them MP3s. The reason why, because they're cheap that way. What we do, we upload 15 or 20 songs of the person with dementia, 15 or 20 of their favourite songs, which they picked, or a loved one's picked for them. Now, it doesn't matter what stage of dementia they're in, unless they've got no family around them, somebody will know what music they used to like. I can remember, my mum and dad's long past. But I could remember my dad's favourite tunes and my mum's favourite tunes. So all we do is ask them to send us 15 or 20 songs with the artist. It has to be a song and then the artist. If anybody says, oh, well, just send us anybody, Elvis Presley or Ben Crosby, we can't do that because it's a sign. It's, um, there is a science behind it, sorry. And um, for me sings, I'm a bit of a songwriter. Uh, I've your songs for like the Plymouth Military Wives and people like that. And I know that music can take you to the happiest place or it could say it's the very saddest place. And what we want to do with the MP3s is to get people with dementia taken to the happiest place. So we ask for the songs because these music and the boxes and the MP3s are very, very personal, bespoke to that one person. They're not for sharing, they're just for them. So when they put them on their heads, they're all happy songs. Do they work? We've been doing this for three years now. And last year we sent out 1,400 MP3s alone around the country. We supplied to our hospital with them. We even supplied the ambulance service with them. So people who was waiting 12 or 14 hours in the ambulance could have something to listen to. So it takes away the boredom. But we also supply care homes up and down the country and hospitals, 37 hospitals around the country. And the thing is, these are also free. We pay the postage, we do the upload. Are we upload? Are we allowed to upload the music is the next question. Yes, we are. Because I got in touch with the Performing Rights Society who own all the rights to the music on the internet and the web. And I told them what we were doing. I said, we have to pay for your license to download. We will do, we don't mind because we know this works so well. They looked at it long and hard and they said, you don't have to pay for anything because it's classed as a treatment. So we got give us then carte launch to upload anything and put it onto the MP3s. So now we, we do all different languages. We do operas in different languages. We do, we can do television recordings. We can do football matches. We can do steam trains, sounds of the sea, sounds of the ocean. 
any video if there's anything out there we can get it and because we don't have a license to pay because we're allowed to do it as a treatment we can keep these going for free now we do rely on donations we do have no government grants like some of the big dementia organizations i could mention we get nothing like that we just rely on donations but we've been doing quite well for three years so when we send the mp3s out and we know their work we just say to the people if you'd like to have a tea dance or you'd like to have a cream tea or a raffle and if you'd like to think about us please donate so we can keep the mp3s going and when i say to their work you would be amazed these people some of them are sat in the chair day in the day out and never speaking they put the headphones on and all of a sudden the foot starts tapping and then you can hear them going Ta -da, and they start singing and they sing it word for word for word exactly as the song is it is the most incredible thing we have a video of a lady in scotland singing a hymn and it's the most beautiful song and she has the most beautiful voice and it's a bit like a susan boyle moment because she comes out on the balcony and she put the headphone but when she starts to sing, the note she reaches at the end is absolutely perfect. If ever you want to see it, email me and I will send you the link. It's the most beautiful thing. So we're doing the, do we know the work? Yes. Now that's just a few things we do at the Purple Angel. At the Vemia Cafe, as I said, everything's free. We have entertainment, we have crafts, we do all sorts. But at the Vemia Cafe on a Saturday, we also do trips out. We have coach trips. In a couple of weeks, we're going to uh, the donkey sanctuary. Absolutely free. We pay for all that. You have nothing to worry about. At Christmas, we're going to Wednesday. We pay for that. You have nothing to worry about. We're looking to organise a Christmas lunch. We pay for that. You have absolutely nothing to worry about. Leave the worrying to us. The Purple Angel is much more than just a dementia campaign. It's about helping the community and being community-based and doing what we can around Torbay especially. We've donated hundreds upon hundreds of pounds towards food banks and other organisations to help them up when they've been in trouble. Because we always think, well, if we've got any money in the bank, we don't like it sat in the bank. We like to know it's doing something and helping people. You know, and that is now what the Purple Angel and Dementia is all about. As you can tell, I'm not a local lad by the accent. I'm a Lancashire lad, but I have been here nearly 25 years. And I do write a column in the Torbay Weekly all about living with my dementia. So if you fancy reading that, please do. Before I go, I would just like to thank you all for tonight, for attending, for listening to this, and for asking to learn a little bit more about dementia. I hope what I've said has cleared a few myths. And I hope it's cleared a few of the fog and blow the clouds away, I said, because it's not all what it seems. It's not this big frightening disease, you know, and people can live with it if they get the right support. You know, I can live quite happily. I struggle with the word living well with it because at the end of the day, it is a terminal disease. And I also struggle when people say, oh, no, you can't say suffering with dementia. Oh, no, no, that's not allowed. But I question that and said, well, why not? I lost my father, my grandmother, to dementia. And when they were in late stages years ago, when we didn't have it near the support we have now, they were confused, they were lost, they were crying, they were so lonely. Tell me they weren't suffering. Tell me they weren't suffering when they didn't recognise anybody, they didn't know anybody. Of course they were suffering. Why not use the word? We suffer from headaches, suffer from migraines. So why not use the word suffer for dementia? Please don't be browbeaten by the powers that be. You are who you are. Use what we urge, use what you use what words you want to do. You can tell it's gonna alert. Guys, thank you so so much for listening to me. As I said, I am beyond about in Torbay. Please, if you see me. Give us a wave, give us a shout. And um, people always say to me, do you believe 
that there will be a cure for dementia in your lifetime. And I always say, yeah, yeah, I've got to believe this. Because if I didn't, I couldn't look my eyes, children, my grandchildren in the eyes. You know, I couldn't do what I do now. I couldn't do this if I didn't believe there would be a cure. But the most ironic thing is, on the day they find a cure for dementia, dementia itself will become just a memory. How ironic is that? But even better, even better, when they find a cure for dementia, then dementia will be forgotten about. Now that's what I call karma. Guys, you've been wonderful. Thank you for being there tonight. I hope to see you around Toy Bear. Sorry I couldn't be there, and I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a wave, and we'll see you in the memory cafe, hopefully. Bye.